it's Lee from ColouringQueen.net and today I've got both UK and US editions of Worlds Within Worlds by Kirby Rosans. So I just want to run through the differences between the two books in case you want to choose one over the other to suit you. If you just want to see what the UK edition looks like, there's a fast flip through at the link below. If you want to see what the US edition looks like, you can see a fast flip through of it at the link below. But this is going to be a comparison video and an extended review and commentary on the two books and some testing of some mediums that you might like to use within it. So on the face of it, they both look and seem the same size. Now my US edition did get a little dinged up in the shipping process, but the UK edition I bought in store and it's in a, a far better pristine condition. I have to say when Kirby said that he was releasing a new book, I didn't pre-order it because I figured I've got all of Kirby's books and to be honest I've never coloured in any of them except for his smaller like notepad books or notebooks the sketchy stories because I've always been incredibly intimidated by Kirby's work it seems so detailed and just so much there that I'm worried that I won't be able to see it and there's also a lot of fur and feathers and I don't know how to do them and so for all sorts of reasons I never coloured them in and then I was at my local bookshop and I seen the UK edition of Worlds Within Worlds I'd gone in there to buy a cookbook and uh, come out without the cookbook but with Worlds Within Worlds because when I seen the book in the shop I realised it was something that finally I felt confident enough to colour in and so I bought it so there we go so that's that extended of why this review is late and uh, also why I ended up buying it so at the top over here we've got the UK edition I bought this one in store this is the US edition that was kindly sent to me by Kirby's publishers now on the face of it they both look the same but there are actually some differences between these two. Oh, and good news I finally coloured in the book so that's a first so you can see up against each other that the US edition is slightly bigger and when we stack them you can see that that's not an illusion from the camera angle to try and get two books within one camera angle. It actually is fact that the US edition is slightly bigger. While we're looking at the spines there, you can see that US edition one is the bottom one and it's slightly damaged from the shipping process. Both of the spines are relatively the same with the UK edition having a larger font size on it and of course the two different publishers. The UK edition is published by Michael O'Mara books and the US edition by Plume. If we stack them on top of each other the US edition still wins as being just slightly a few millimeters bigger than the US edition, UK edition. Sorry. So the covers look pretty well the same when you look straight at them but there are some actual differences so the UK edition has the publishers logo right at the top but it's also a different cover it's a laminate cover and this picture here is a decal type transfer that's been put on it whereas the US cover it has a real texture to it and this image is not a decal but it's actually coloured onto the card and you can also see on the US edition that the spine is getting all of this wear down here because it's a it's a like a card without a laminate on it whereas the UK edition isn't and I've had this book for longer I've had this one for a day or two and I've had this one for a couple of weeks now so there's a difference in those two covers the laminate one is the UK edition and the US one 
has like a card cover and it's got a texture to it and this image is actually coloured onto the card where this is a decal and this has a real texture to it this book the US edition now the back cover on them uh, both has the same sort of imagery but it looks like the coloured images are a different size so this one over here say 16 and a half sorry 16 yeah there is a difference of course with the publisher's blurb the US edition has more colourful details here for Kirby's social media and there is more publishing details written out We've got different font sizes and different placement of the ISBN number, but basically they're the same cover. Now, I did weigh them both on my trusty kitchen scales. Unfortunately, the battery's gone flat on my electric scale and I don't have a replacement for it. But I used these kitchen scales and because they, uh, I can't tilt the camera to show you, they both weighed the same in at 500 grams. So to me that tells me that the paper quality and the card cover seem to be the same weight that they've used between both editions of the book. Okay, so looking inside. Now it's hard trying to line up two books uh, for review, so we'll see how we go. I'm going to note down which ones are which so that you can follow along. So you'll immediately see that the UK edition, which is this red one at the front, has a lovely red laminate inside card cover, whereas the US edition has a plain cover. So the UK is at the top and the US below it. Now I used my Inktense pencils on this front image. I just wanted to see what it looked like to be honest. And just to, I haven't finished it yet, but I used Inktense, the 12 set, on that one. And it worked out very well. There was no problems with pilling on the paper or anything like that. Now the paper in the books is a slightly different colour. So if we're turning over, you'll notice that there's a few difference with font sizings and of course the different logo for the publishers. They are both 96 pages and all of the illustrations are exactly the same and they've all been put in the same order in both editions. It's just that the paper looks slightly different. So on the US edition, the paper has a creamier white to it, whereas the UK edition is more of a whiter look. If you see it up against a piece of white copy paper, that might demonstrate the difference in the colours. The paper is smooth in both of the books. We can see that all of the information is the same. They've just, uh, the different colours in the paper make it look slightly different. And this information is basically the same, it's just reorganised according to the publisher's preference. And the interesting thing for me is the cover design is by John Bigwood. So unless I'm mistaken, he was the artist behind A Million Christmas Cats. So we've got double page illustrations throughout the book and the images do run up into the spine. Some of the images could have been better laid out in all honesty to avoid the ditch but they're both the same in both editions of the book. Now to me the US edition feels like it's got a heavier card than the UK edition which is why I weighed them because to me the paper in the US edition feels a lot heavier than the paper in the UK edition but weight wise they both weigh the same so that tells me either I'm imagining it or that the cover and the actual binding material may weigh more in one book than in the other but they're both smooth 
they're both white they're just different shades of white and if you've ever wanted to paint your house white you know that there are a million shades of white available as <laughs> as I know having to repaint some of my trims because they were a warm white rather than a cool white that I wanted now the stitching is a glue and a stitched binding on the UK US edition it's still not laying down flat because it's still relatively new this one on the bottom I've only had it a couple of days I suspect that this US one is stitched but I can't find the actual stitches in it and they seem like they're hidden <laughs> within the seam whereas the UK ones I was able to find the stitch in it to see that it was uh, stitched as well it seems to have like an invisible binding on the US edition so I absolutely adore the illustrations in this book and I don't know if it's now because I feel a little more confident with colouring or if they just appeal to me more than um, Kirby's other books but I feel like I could tackle pictures in this book and I remember saying once about Kirby's books being a little bit too detailed for me and my theory was always put a colour wash on anything that's too fiddly if it's got too many fiddly bits in it I, you know, I don't want to get out um, the glasses and, and muck around with it too much and uh, one of the um, my viewers said that the detailed books are actually easier to colour because of the detail that you can approach it just like little detail by detail rather than having a mass expanse of space and what I was seeing as a pile of fiddly bits and feeling overwhelmed by I could put down to like a micro level and you know feel confident colouring little bits at a time so that's what I'm going to do and thank you very much for that advice this is clearly me cleaning up the colouring book cave and everything falling off the shelves so there is a lot of detail in Kirby's work uh, normally and in this one as well there's no exception he's using a, a dull black line art and as I always say you can just use a colour wash over things but I think the advice that I got from a viewer was really good just to approach things just like a little bit at a time like as the saying goes how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time which is what I always feel David when he's feeling overwhelmed but I'm not very good at taking my own advice <laughs> Now like all Kirby's books it's interactive and there is a legend at the back where you can find out the answers to things that you are meant to be searching for. As per usual I will not be searching for anything because I find it too detailed enough to add an extra challenge to it. <laughs> but each to their own. I love this book because it's got such a range of different things. We've got the whole concept of a world within another world which is fantastic and you can see here we've got the sea and the foliage and the buildings and the architecture all with a like a space age futuristic theme to it and then we can turn over and have something you know completely different larger elements more open space and still that sea theme that belongs with that city and the nature theme that that belongs in that world so you're seeing things from a really different perspective and I really like it really like this book I also like that the cover art has been included for us to color in that's why I wasn't worried about putting my intense pencils on that initial title page because I knew that the image was already in the book in full and isn't this cat gorgeous so the whole theme of the Sphinx cat and also the pyramids down there and then all this ancient Egypt in here and not one of his funny little doodles in sight from what he used to do with all the funny little characters and whatnot. This is a far more mature Kirby, a far more grown up Kirby 
And not that there's anything wrong with his earlier work either. It's just that I find, for me, that this one is far more appealing and I can really imagine colouring something in. And I will be colouring something in. I've already had a crack at that title page, just mucking around with the ink tents. I hadn't used them for a while and I just wanted to see what they were like on the paper. So look at this beautiful double page spread. I've got a pesky fly that's wanting to fly around today. So I hope he's not bothering too much. But look at this beautiful shell and formations. And all the gorgeous little fairy houses or, or sea houses coming out. Like I can really see doing so many of these pictures. And I know that the ink tents goes well on them because I've already used them. So you've got the onion domes on top of the mushrooms. So it's kind of like a vegetarian dinner there. Onions and mushrooms. Well, onion dome architecture. But look at all the beautiful detail in here. You can just imagine that as like a, a Turkish bazaar with like brass items. And you've got little penguins sitting there on their own little chunk of ice inside a, a lantern. You know, that could be Turkish or Moroccan or Asia. It's just gorgeous. Now, this is one of my favourite pictures. These windmills. Aren't they lovely? You can just imagine all these fields of tulips. It's so beautiful. And these are like miniature terrariums. And maybe that's because I'm into the gardening lately. <laughs> and I was thinking about terrariums the other day. They were very popular in the 1970s, but... They seem to be making a bit of a comeback. Now, I wish that the doll's house didn't run across both pages like that, but really with a double page spread like this and the artist wanting to, to get the design into it, I guess there's no other way to do it. But sometimes, some of these things will be a little bit close to the ditch, so you'll just have to crack that spine Give it a good whack and, uh, you know, break the binding in order to get it to lay down flat. Or just hold it up one side and push down to really get in there with your pencil. Look at this fairground inside the flower. Isn't that gorgeous? I think that one's a perfect one for me because I love flowers. And I collect fairground material. And these gorgeous little houses on the leaves. It's so beautiful. I really, you can just see doing every page in this book. There's actually not a page that I don't like. I love these fish. I know they've been featured in his other books, but as I said, for some reason, I really can see that I will actually colour this. And I was glad that I seen it inside the store when I went to buy my cookbook, because then I wasn't going to buy it at all and then picking it up in the store and flicking through it and of course seeing this double page spread of bunnies really made me think well yeah I do need this in my life and I think I will have to have this colouring book look at that gorgeous sloth so this one seems to have a lot more black into it than this one as well and you can see how the ink on the UK edition looks a lot darker then on the US edition as well in some of these pages. Look, we've got the little, uh, I think it's a whale within the flower. And then the whale coming out of the lotus flower. It's beautiful. And these ones are just stunning. The country scene within this elaborate frame with all the little penguins at the back on the side. And I don't really like snakes, but I do like this one where it flows into the tray. And then you've got like the stick people, because Kirby never draws people. And neither did Joanna Basford until Ivy and the Inky Wonderland. So now he's put in a few little stick people down here. Which makes me wonder what else we'll see from Kirby. Like, will he ever start doing realistic people? He does animals so incredibly well and architecture and nature. So you think maybe, maybe one day Kirby will do actual people as well. 
he's got some more little stick people down here look at all our beautiful metals here that we can colour so many different little elements in this picture and a very engraved little box there and all the dripping candles that look like Roman architecture so then we've got and I love the way it's all different countries as well like the Netherlands, Switzerland you know countries that are renowned for different things have all been incorporated in this book so we've got like our cuckoo clock here with a lot of detail and then the beautiful lion that instead of having a mane he has a pile of trees which is actually really stunning and we've got these beautiful lizard like creatures with their pyramid backs so isn't that a different perspective instead of looking at the scales on their back that they're actual pyramids or tombs it's super interesting what he's done here and I, I just really admire his imagination. Now the Russian dolls are always a favourite of mine. I love these and I've got a set of them myself and I, I just find them adorable but I find this where you open it up and find another little world to be really adorable. And we've got these gorgeous little onion domes that Russia is renowned for. Now, I hope I haven't slipped off screen, but it's very difficult having two books within frame, especially with double-sided images. Now, I do believe that this is New York. I could be wrong. So it looks like a illustration that's based on the USA, but I could be wrong. And then we've got this gorgeous double-page spread where you've got the creatures from the past, the prehistoric dinosaurs, up against the galaxy and the rockets of the future. So two worlds colliding now. Now this one here really reminds me of Kirby's Back to His Roots of Anamorphia, probably because of the imagery and all these little lanterns, but gorgeous picture. And I love this unicorns, we've got the crystals, we've got the rainbow, and it's all within a bird cage. Two rams. Yeah, so I really like this uh, new look Kirby. I really, I love this book. And I really am glad that I've got two of them. There's been some amazing colouring of the sneakers, which always, every time I look at it, I think old woman that lives in the shoe. <laughs> but so many different designs of this picture, different colour schemes and whatnot. And if you search for it on Instagram, you'll see amazing colourists that have coloured this. Now, so far, I haven't seen, even though there's a few millimetres difference in page sizing, I haven't noticed any elements that have been cut off or not there because of the page sizing um, that would interfere with your enjoyment of colouring in the picture. So then we've got the answer key at the back. And there's thumbnails here to provide where the answers are. And then the only difference at the back is that the UK edition has that coloured back page with Kirby's other books on it and the US edition is blank. Now the UK cover feels a lot sturdier because it's got that laminate on it than the US edition. And on the back we've just got that different publisher's blurb and the different coloured printing for Kirby's details and a few different font sizes and whatnot, but nothing there of any significance. So let's do some testing of the books and see what mediums work best. So let's uh, test out the ink tents in the USA edition. I've already done work on it in the UK edition, but let's go for the US this time and maybe do this page. So I think I might just put a bit of blue around the middle because there's no way I want to colour this all by hand. So we'll just see how it goes. Just putting it on direct with the pencil. It's going on very smoothly. And we'll just add some water to it. I 
added a drop more water so that it'll blob out and so that we can see if it causes any problems with the paper but it's still fine so that makes me think that watercolors would be fine on this as well if it takes the ink tents but obviously it's not watercolor paper so if you're using a lot of water on there you're probably going to end up peeling the paper now I do want to see this UK one I did the ink tents on there and I was just you know mucking around but let's see if it'll take ink tents on the back of the page as well so I'll just do the same thing, put on a bit by pencil. And remember I've got intents on that reverse page. And adding more water here, splashing it around. And still no peeling or anything on the paper, everything is still fine. But I also have ink tents on the back, so I'm thinking that if it had too much, then it would uh, cause a problem. And now that I'm looking at it close up, it does look like it's slightly peeling. So we'll keep an eye on that. This looks like it's a little bit of difference in colour. I'll show you what I mean. So you can see the little dots there. They don't look like they're dissolving as well. But we'll see what it's like by the time we finish because it'll be dry by then. So there's our ink tents, and remember neither of them have watercolour paper. So now I think I'll try my Holborn pencils, just a little set of 12, and see what they're like. Maybe we'll do a little full onion top. Now I am standing up and I'm also well away from the desk, just to get these two books in frame. So. This is not the normal way I would colour if I didn't have to do these terrible camera angles. So it's going on quite smooth on the UK edition of the paper there. Feels better on the US edition, it feels easier to colour. And it seems to be producing more pigment than it did on the UK edition. So I might come back and just add another layer here. Yeah. This one on the second layer feels better. Whereas this one doesn't seem to need a second layer, but we'll give it one anyway. So that's it with our Holbens. With this UK edition, that ink tense is really bothering me. So I'm wondering if it's, and feeling it, it feels like the paper is torn and it's got that discoloration. So I'm thinking it's because I've already used ink tense on that page. So I might just put some on the facing page and we'll see if that peels. And remember personal style, I might be using more ink tents than you or more or more water. So we'll see how this goes. It's definitely far smoother when you haven't used ink tents on the reverse. And it's not doing that peeling. So that's good to know because there is a real difference in the look and the uh, the feel of these ones. I'll just zoom out so you can see. So I think that this discoloration is because I used the intents on the, the reverse page. 
So over here it's going fine just as it was when I used it initially. But this bit's got a real different texture to it and it feels it feels yeah, very peeled. Although it doesn't look peeled, it feels certainly like the paper has been damaged. Okay. So let's try the Prismacolors. So these are my set of 36 that uh, rarely get used because I've got the 150 now. But these were my first set of Prismacolors. So I should have sharpened them. You know, what's something red that we can colour in? Maybe one of these little mushrooms here. Now it's going on quite smooth, but you can see the tooth of the paper. It's far smoother on the UK edition than it is on the US. Here you can see the tooth. But with the second colour, that tooth is starting to quickly disappear on the US edition. And on the UK edition, it's blending in very smoothly. So, so far both are really good. With the UK edition, US edition, I think it can take more layers. So if you like to layer, going another one here with the Prismacolors then you might like that, but we'll see what the uh, UK edition is like. At least, uh, no matter so far what you like to use, I'm not having any problems with either any of the pencils that I'm testing, so the UK edition on that second layer is producing a lovely smooth finish with uh, no tooth showing. So, so far so good. Now let's try the polychromos. So I've got two polys here. We'll give them a test. Uh, maybe we'll, we'll do this. Now they're both going on very well. They feel better on the US edition than the UK edition, but that could just be my personal feeling. They feel like they're going on really smooth on the US edition. On the UK edition, I don't feel as if I'm getting as much pigment from them, but they seem to like a couple of goes, so we'll, we'll come back for another go over here. And the colour is really vibrant on that paper. Now it's very hard to replicate the exact thing because over here I'm, I'm closer to the page because of my camera setup. And on this side I am leaning over a bit. They're both going on great on the paper. There's absolutely no problems. The tooth is going. And, you know, really I have no complaints with anything that I've tried so far. I hope you enjoy this uh, extended review and commentary and if you like this book the links to buy the editions are below the video. Until next time, happy colouring.